Students experience a number of challenges that make it difficult for them to learn and study. Parents and teachers may wonder whether these students are genuinely having a difficulty or whether they are just playing up. Father Joy Fernandez, who holds a doctorate in counseling psychology with a major in clinical counseling, addresses some questions that parents and teachers commonly raise in this series entitled Understanding and Helping Children with Learning Difficulties. This first episode presents an overview of learning difficulties. Each specific difficulty is explained more elaborately in later episodes. Over to Father Ajoy Fernandez. Teachers on an average teach between 40 to 60 children in a regular classroom. Most of their students catch up with general classroom instructions. However, teachers don't seem to get through to some of their students no matter how hard they try. Teachers do know that these children have some kind of learning difficulty, but they are just not able to figure out the exact nature of these children's difficulty and to give these difficulties a name. In this episode, I will present a broad overview of the kind of learning difficulties that children generally experience. I will also mention the names given to these difficulties in the Indian Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016 and the fifth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, commonly referred to as the DSM-5. So, stay with me and take the plunge. Teachers and parents often describe the challenges that some children face with their studies. Some difficulties that they commonly notice are that these children skip words or lines when reading, struggle to name objects pointed to, disturb other children in class, or disturb siblings when they are studying, write D as B or P as Q, add numbers from left to right instead of from right to left, sit and stare vacantly into space or drift off into a world of dreams are unable to understand instructions given in class, randomly use capital or small letters in sentences, take long to memorize information or poems, or constantly lose books and stationery. Parents and teachers sometimes think that children display these difficulties because they have problems at home, they have some physiological or medical problem, Parents are unable to attend to them due to their work schedules, they have not been adequately disciplined, or they have not been taught effectively when they were small. These seem to be a vague jumble of learning problems arising from a vague jumble of causes. Yet, if we take a close look, there are different types of learning problems and each type has its own specific cause. The first type may be called environmental difficulties. Some children find it difficult to study due to challenges they experience at home, school or their neighborhood. Some difficulties that children commonly experience are Our home is very small. I have to study on the street. I am constantly in conflict with my parents and brother. We don't have sufficient food at home and my parents cannot afford to buy me books and stationery. People in our neighborhood keep blaring music on loudspeakers. It is difficult to study with all the noise. Children might not be able to focus on their studies on account of these difficulties. These are not learning disabilities. They might more adequately be called environmental difficulties that make it difficult for children to study. Borderline intelligence is the second type of difficulty. 
Some students don't seem to understand what their teacher says. They often find it difficult to memorize poems and answers to questions. In addition, they are slow to understand the rules of a football game or to understand jokes that their peers narrate. It might be possible that some children like these have a slightly below average level of intelligence. Learning disorders is the third category. Some children experience specific difficulties with reading, writing, spelling or doing math. They could possibly be suffering from a language disorder or a specific learning disorder. They tend to be dreamy and get easily distracted. Other children are unable to sit in one place. They may move around the classroom, talk excessively, disturb their classmates or take their books and stationery. They could possibly be suffering from a hyperactivity disorder. It gets easier to understand children's learning difficulties when we are able to identify the specific types of difficulty that they experience. In addition, this makes it easier to devise interventions tailored to their specific type of difficulty. I understand that there are many different ways in which learning difficulties have been classified. Could you tell us what system of classification you choose to follow? Theorists have clustered learning difficulties of students in various ways. For the presentation in this series, I include the disabilities specifically mentioned in the Indian Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016. I represent this title with the short form Disabilities Act. This is a legal document. It guarantees academic concessions for children with learning disabilities that have been specifically mentioned in the Act. School administrators and teachers might want to know more about these disabilities. I include all the disabilities mentioned in the Act. However, I follow the terminology and classification system of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual 5th edition, commonly known as the DSM-5. The DSM is an internationally used diagnostic manual. It updates the names and classification of disorders in the light of the most recent researches. Can you tell us how learning disabilities are defined in the Disabilities Act? The Disabilities Act defines specific learning disabilities as a deficit in processing language spoken or written that may manifest itself as a difficulty to comprehend, speak, read, write, spell or do mathematical calculations and includes such conditions as perceptual disabilities, dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia, dyspraxia and developmental aphasia. You have said that DSM-5 sometimes uses different names for disorders mentioned in the Disabilities Act. Can you tell us what these similarities and differences are? You have asked me a very pertinent question. Persons associated with the Education Department might use terms specified in the Disabilities Act. Psychologists might engage the terminology of the DSM-5. Taking note of the similarities and differences might help avoid a lot of confusion. I will present a brief summary here. The term intellectual disability is used both in the Disabilities Act and the DSM-5. The Disabilities Act speaks of specific learning disabilities. The DSM-5 calls them specific learning disorders. It suggests that what is disordered can be reordered. The Disabilities Act speaks of dyslexia and dyscalculia. The DSM-5 permits the use of these terms. The term dyspraxia used by the Disabilities Act could be spoken of as the DSM-5 term developmental coordination disorder. Dysgraphia could be considered to be a subtype of this disorder. Developmental aphasia spoken of in the Disabilities Act 
is represented by the DSM-5 term language disorder. The Disabilities Act speaks of processing difficulties but does not specify what they are. Research suggests that the DSM-5 Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder and Sensory Processing Disorder may be considered to be processing difficulties that make it difficult for children to study. These disorders are not caused by environmental conditions, though environmental conditions may aggravate them. The DSM-5 classifies them as neurodevelopmental disorders. Thus, these conditions may not be fully in control of the child. We will speak about each of these disorders in greater detail in later episodes of this series.